okay hello everyone this is victor momo from excel moments and in this video we want to talk about the brand new yes the brand new text split function and i'm three weeks late to the party but as they say better late than never or should we say we've saved the best for last okay we've never had you know a native split function in excel we've always had a split function in vba you could do this in um, you know power query well you could do text to columns but we've never had a function you know that could just help us split by the But the wait is over now we have the text split function although it's only available to office insiders but hopefully shortly we should have it available to you know i'll say the entire office 365 subscribers okay so let's get into you know how the function works you probably already know this is really just text columns with a formula but i'll show you some examples okay so this is the text split function and i've kind of listed here the arguments the text of course is the string that contains the delimiter column delimiter if you want to split you know across the columns what's your delimiter if you want to split down the rows what's your row delimiter in cases where maybe you have consecutive delimiters and it gives you an empty um i would say it produces an empty cell and an empty string you want it to skip it ignore or you know just leave it now for part width, there could be cases where, you know, you split and you're expecting like five entries. One of the rows may have maybe four entries and then it returns an any, you know, on that row saying that, oh, I can't find the fifth entry I'm supposed to have. You want it to show any or do you want to replace it with a different text? More like what you will do with if error, if any. But, you know, you would understand it better when we do an example. Okay, so um, we'll call text split up just to see how it looks like and exactly what I described. I know I've stated here that, you know, column delimiter is optional. But if you look at, you know, the function tooltip here, you can see that it doesn't have square brackets. So it appears like, you know, it is required. But the idea here is that one of the column delimiter or row delimiter is required, right? So you can't have both of them not given any entries, right? You must provide something for one of them. So you could provide for the column delimiter, skip the row. You could provide for the row, you know, skip the column. So I would say that, you know, at least one of them is required. So that probably explains why column delimiter is showing up as required here. But you can skip it and use only the row delimiter. Let's look at an example quickly. I could just select this cell, if for example, and I want to split by an underscore. Okay, so what this is saying is that, you know, split this by an underscore across the columns, right? Let's see what it gives you. So it gives you row and then it gives you delimiter. So what if I wanted it to go, you know, down the rows instead? What I'm going to do is that instead of putting it as a column delimiter, I just put a comma. The comma skips the column delimiter argument and now, you know, I'm in the row delimiter, right? And you see splits, you know, down the rows. Very easy. So let's get into the examples, simple examples, I would say. <laughs> so here, this is an example where you have a consistent delimiter. So you have a pipe separating, you know, all the different elements here. So simple. You just do text split, you select the text, put your pipe here as your delimiter. That's all. Right? You know, take that, you know, down and you have everybody. Okay? So now you can see it split across you know, all the columns. Of course, it's a spilled range, so the formula really only sits in the first column. You can see the rest of them are pretty much grayed out, and you can see the blue borders showing you that. Next one, multiple delimiters. Okay, this is a case where, you know, you don't have a consistent delimiter across, but you have multiple delimiters. So you can see, if you look at the employee ID and the first name, you see a comma and a space. Between the first name and the last name, that looks like a comma. Between the last name and um, department, that looks like a pipe. So what you do is you can use text split, same way. You select the text. When you want to use multiple delimiters, you go with curly brackets. And then each of the delimiters in double quotes. So you go with curly brackets. First one I see there is a comma and a space. Next one I see there is a comma. Last one I see is a pipe. Okay, so then, sorry, close with the curly bracket and then you can close this pretty much, right? And then you can see all of them are done, right? Okay, so now you have your employee ID, first name, last name. Yeah, you can just take this up you know, just so that you have the headers too, right? That's fine. Okay, I think it's also important to note here that, you know, the order doesn't necessarily matter, right? That even if you had put pipe first before comma space, it would still work. Let's see that. So instead of you know, putting pipe at the end. So what I'm going to do is here where I have comma space, I'm going to put my pipe there, right? Then here, 
I'm going to do comma space. Let's see if that still works. Right? Okay. So, still works either way. So, it's really just about providing all the delimiters, not necessarily in the order in which they appear. Okay. So, next example. This one um, combines, you know, splitting into rows and columns. So, at the same time. So, what do you notice about this here? Even though you can see that if you go, you know, from, let's say, left to right, you can see that... Um, is split by a space right there's a space between the first name last name and then a space between that and the um, department but now you also notice that yeah you have a delimiter too between the rows and what's that delimiter that's like your new line right okay so because you can see that this is all in one cell but what i want to do is actually to break it into you know multiple rows so i want to break it into you know three columns and then each of them into multiple rows right so that's what i'm going to do here okay so straight up here i go to text split right and then i select the text as just this cell now in terms of my column delimiter column space space will help me break it you know into the column so i'm going to put a space here right then my row delimiter which looks like the tricky one but you know that when you do like um, a new line within um, an excel cell that's really just your character 10 that's your limit right so i can just put character 10 in there all right and then I close the brackets Let's see oh what did i do wrong oh did v <laughs> okay so now you can see we have what we want let me scroll down a little right so you can see now that we have them in multiple columns and multiple rows Okay, so now you have first name, last name, department, and then you have all of them split. So this is really, really great. You know, like you can split into rows and columns with just one uh, function. Okay, so now let's um, do something a little different, but still building up on the same idea. But here, this is a case where I have multiple delimiters across, you know, the columns. So you can see that between first name and last name now is a comma and then there's a space okay and then i'll still use character 10 so it's really like the last example just building of it so i do text split you know i select this now for multiple columns so you know how i do that right i'm going to use a curly bracket okay i'm going to start with maybe the comma that's the first one i can see and the next one is a space okay so i close my curly brackets that's it for the column delimiter Okay, then for the row delimiter here, I'm going to use the same thing, character 10, right, okay, okay, now, yes, things have started to fall apart, which is good, right, because I said, oh, okay, it was a comma, but you probably noticed that, oh, maybe it should actually have been like what, a comma and a space, but now the problem here is that it's just so inconsistent, right, you know, so look at this now. This one actually had a comma, a space. Yeah, this one had a space, a comma, you know, so it's just all over the place. So at this point here, this is where it's really supposed to just be three, right? It's supposed to just be three columns, okay? Now you can see some of them, you know, are now having some empty, um, you know, cells there. So this is where the other two arguments, you know, now come in handy. So what are those two arguments, okay? So I haven't used any of them before which is like what ignore empty so for ignore empty if you actually don't provide anything for ignore empty excel defaults it to false which is it includes empty cells okay so in cases where i said okay split by a comma split by a space it will see a comma it will split if the comma and the space are together then for the space it doesn't see anything so it's just going to return an empty cell so to avoid that i could just say you know do a true here right so which is like ignore empty cells that's one part of it. So if I do that, you can see that, okay, now, yes, it's fixed. So when I have consecutive delimiters, it's still able to handle it. Of course, the easiest way to have solved this problem is to really use the correct delimiter. Instead of using maybe comma and then a space, you probably need comma space. I think that's probably the appropriate one here. But it's really all over the place. But the good thing is that, you know, that argument can help you. But now you also have some other problems, which are like the NEs that you see here. So you see some NEs. So why do we have those NEs there? So let's look at one example. This is Clint Eastwood. Now, he doesn't have any department, right? So that's the problem here. Same thing with Akuna Obi. She doesn't have any department. 
so because it's supposed to split and see you know three columns it's seeing two now it gives you what an na so how do you fix that okay so somebody else may just say oh yeah just do if any and say if na meaning if it returns any you know show maybe no data something like that right that's going to fix it okay so that fixes it but you don't have to do that right now with text split text split can take care of that okay so what does text split have text split has an argument which is called pad width so more or less like if it returns you know an error so what do you want me to do so here i will just say no data found just to create that distinction here right so let's go down see so you can see no data found no data found so that pretty much is the way you use um you know the remaining i'll say two arguments which are um, you know whether you want to ignore empty cells and how to use the pad width. So I think this was a good example to kind of buttress, you know, that point. Um, the last one here is just an interesting one where, you know, just decided to go a little funky, okay, which is a little stepping out of the text split a little. But what if I wanted to get like first and last names here? Now, the point here being that some people have first, middle, last, some people have just first and last, okay? So, Essentially, I know I'm going to go with text split, right? Okay, and then here I'm going to say split by space, right? That's it. Okay, but now the challenge is that if you take this down, yes, this can be funky. So let's do this, right? Okay, so you can see that um, some of them have just first and last name. But what I want is that I want to return here, Pacquiao. Here, I want to return, you know, Goldmeyer, uh, Johnson. Anybody that has three, return three. Anyone that has two, return the second one. Okay, so now it's not exactly, you know, straightforward using the text split. But for the first part of it, of course, one could easily have used left, right? But what I could do on one hand is to use maybe index, okay? Because I know that this is an array, you know, it's going to spill. Or however it spills, just give me the first one, okay? So this should work for first names. Okay, so this should work for first name. I think the tricky one is now for what the last name. And I'm just trying to say, I just want to use text split. Maybe I did some other functions, text before text after, but I don't want to touch them. I want to just see, you know, what it is I can do. Okay, so for the second one, what I'll probably do is this. I know that text split, you know, is going to split into a couple of columns. And then I can count the number of entries. If it gives me three entries, it means that the person has three names, right? Okay. So then what I need is, oh, when you split by space, you know, give me, in quotes, maybe that entry. If you, if it has two names, then give me that entry. So what I'm going to do is this. Just check this out. I'm going to do maybe like a count A, a count A of the text split. Okay, so that's like saying count when I split by space. Right? So you see what that gives us. So those that have three gives us three. Those that have two gives us two. Okay, so good. So now... This would feature in my index. So I can do an index. And the index is going to be, you know, you take the text split, same text split. You know, you split it by space, right? So you know that this is going to spill the three names. Okay, then from these three names, what do you want? Whatever, you know, the count A is. If it's three, then it means that, you know, I want the third. If it's two, you know, then I want that. So pretty much something like this. And then I take it. Okay. So, and now you can see here, even though I have two names, it's returning, you know, of course, the surname here where I have Wayne Macrooney, it only returns, you know. Anyway, this is me just trying to show you, you know, how the index function can also be used to retrieve individual elements of, you know, the text split which gives you an array. I know this video was maybe longer than I intended, but I'm sure it must be what you know your while. Well. There's still 13 other functions to cover and we will get there. But I hope that you've had fun with this one um if you like the video please hit the like button subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out